Hi, I'm Jeff Halaby. Between the job, family, and the day-to-day -day grind, sometimes your workout falls to the wayside. So if you're cramped with commitments, listen up. I've got a regimen that's perfect for those pressed for time. Today on Workout From Within. We're putting the fun back in fitness, not to your chest, but more to your hip area. There you go. That's it, let's go, come on. You gotta live it. We're all pressed for time, but that doesn't mean fitness should be ignored. With just a few power moves, you can get quick and effective results. Here to give it a go with me is pro golfer Mark Farrell. Welcome, Mark. Hey, Jeff. Thanks. Great to be here again. How are you? Now, you're a PGA golfer. I am. And as I understand, golfers are always on some type of tour. They're always touring. Absolutely. I'm traveling a bunch, and I never know what my situation is going to be, what I have available to me. So I'm looking for something that I can do with um, my clubs that I have with me, Titleist clubs, and I've always got them with me, so that's, that's where I'm going with You even it. have one with you now, I got I one noticed. here right now. Absolutely. <laughs> Hopefully, we can use it. It. Phenomenal. We can. And you know, it, it, what's great about a, a golf club is it's actually versatile. We could probably spend 45 minutes of me showing you, uh, you know, a variety of different exercises that we could do just using the golf club. Wow. And especially if we had an entire set, it could get even more interesting, you know. Right. Um, with just the club that we have right now, though, there are a number of exercises we can do that are excellent for you as a golfer. So that I'm going to make them as, as golf specific as possible. Wonderful. Okay. So first up, um, we're going to work on a little bit of forearm strengthening. Now, in order Excellent. to just strengthen, you know, as you know, as, as a golfer, you need grip strength, you need forearm strength, sure. and then we're going to move on to another forearm issue that I know that you've had some intimate knowledge of. But first, we're going to start with strengthening. Now, this is the forearm and the, you know, the elbow and the shoulder all together. You're just going to hold the club out, and you're just going to do rotations. Got it. So this is something you could do as a warm-up. You can do this as a strengthening exercise. If you're doing it as a strengthening exercise, you're obviously going to hold the club longer. But you'll rotate inward, you know, inward uh, at first, and then you can just reverse it for just as many repetitions, keeping everything balanced. Great. So why don't you go ahead and give it a go? Okay. You will feel it after. Just go straight out, just so we keep the shoulder, forearm, and wrist all engaged. And you can do small circles, big circles. There's no oh, right yeah. or wrong yeah, here. Yeah, I feel it right through here. You should absolutely feel it there. And there's a reason that we Ooh. want to strengthen that yeah. area. Yeah. And that leads me to our second exercise. Okay. Now, as a golfer, you wouldn't have happened to have had uh, any golfer's elbow. I, I did. <laughs> okay. I did. On my left side, it was, it was, it was really troubling. It it's was... brutal. Now, this is one of those things. Now, um, as I shared with you, I do golf. Um, right. I hack at the ball like a meathead, <laughs> so I'm not much of a golfer. But I do golf. And I got golfer's elbow, but not even from golfing. I got it in the gym from lifting heavy because the right. same area can get irritated. Now, just to clear up for our viewers, too, there's golfer's, golfer's elbow and there's tennis elbow. Right. Golfer's elbow happens on the medial epicondyle, so the inside yep, of was. exactly. Right. And it can happen a little below, a little above, or right on the little bony nub over there. Right. Uh, tennis elbow happens on the lateral epicondyle, so it's the actual the outside of the elbow. Yep. Okay. No pain on that side for me. Shouldn't have any pain there uh, unless you pick up tennis. Don't do both. Okay. If you golf and you play tennis, you're in trouble. Right. So this next exercise is great both to prevent it and rehabilitate yourself if you do get a uh, golfer's elbow. So the way to do this is set up with your arm at uh, bent at uh, 90 degrees at the elbow. Got it. And then from here, what we're going to do is slowly lower the club in. Yep. And then raise it back up. Now, this is something that may be too painful for someone who has golfer's elbow when it's flared up. The easy way to reduce the load on this exercise is just drop the club down. Makes sense. So even just work, because obviously now we're moving less weight, okay? Right. So the whole idea, though, is to keep it really slow on the way down and work that negative portion. Now, depending on where you are, now, you have no golfer's elbow right now. No, I'm okay. clear. So why don't we go more for the strengthening side of things? Okay. So you can hold the club all the way at the end. Get a nice 90 degree uh, bend in the elbow and a little closer to the body. So, okay. yep, just yep. like that. Okay. It's lower as slowly as possible. Okay. And then you can go ahead and reverse it at normal speed. Gotcha. Okay. okay, so you can take about four or five seconds on the way down and back, and this oh, is one yeah. of those exercises. I really feel it right in there. As I was gonna say, yeah. after like two or three reps, you're like, oh, okay, this is a little more challenging than it looks. You know, you wouldn't think that you would get such a good workout from just using the Titleist club. Well, that's it. All you really need is the club that you already have with you. So if you're, you know, time pressed, like we're talking about today, right, right. this is something. I mean, even you're waiting for a flight in the in the airport. Right. There's no reason you can't find a little. You know,
corner and do some of these rotations, do this. Now, one other one that I want to share with you that's also very golf specific is golf is a rotational sport. Absolutely. Okay. Except for me. For me, it's just a, a hacking sport. You know? Shop. But <laughs> Exactly. But when we, when we talk about rotational sports, we work, really want to work chop and lift patterns. And that's working diagonally down and up. So we're going to incorporate a little bit of a squat into it. We're going to start with our hands just about shoulder width apart. Okay. We're going to bring up the club. Mm -hmm. and then chop down and squat into it. Gotcha. Now, if we want to get a little more fancy, what we can do is imitate the swing just a bit more. So I'm going to start up top and rotate in, gotcha. down, and now when I come back up, do the opposite. Rotate out. Rotate the other way so yeah. we can rotate in, yeah. rotate out. Weight is not that important because for two reasons. Number one is it's important to work this pattern overall and that means you even if you do not golf this is an important pattern that you must master um, and the other reason is we can always increase the the speed and really turn this into a power move so if i chop down and come back up i don't need a heavy weight why don't right. you give it a go right 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 okay so i'm gonna get here that looks good to me yep you can come up yep and now down. down, that's it. And what I'd like you to do is actually just like when you swing, you'd come up to the toe and rotate gotcha. the just like that and come back up. And then exactly. Yep. So I always and just move that heel out just a bit for me. So I, yeah, there we go. That. Okay. That way you're always balancing your body. Because obviously you only swing in one oh, there direction. We go. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a lot so, more balance. So yeah. the whole idea is to really balance out the body. Now, from what well, I understand. You can really feel that. You, you'll, you'll absolutely feel yeah. it. Especially if you go faster, you'll really feel it. Now, from what I understand, there's one exercise you wanted to show me. What's yeah. this? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's what we do is the whole thing with golf is getting into the right posture. Okay. And what I like to do with this club, this Titleist club, is get my hands out in front and I bend not at the waist but at the hips. I bend at the hips. Uh -huh. And now to get and to engage my thighs, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring my heels up off the ground about a half inch. Right. That's going to load me right into my thighs there. So Love I'm going to get there like that, and I'm just going to feel a good posture, and it's going to feel me loading in because when I get there, I'm going to be right here. I'm going to stay strong over the ball. And you need to you need to have your stability. That's a great move. I'm going to try that during the break. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure having you. Great being here. Stick around because coming up next, we have a time-saving twist on yoga and later how to streamline your hectic schedule. We're pressed for time today, and no, I don't mean it's going to be a shorter episode. I've got exercise strategies for the time pressed. Even though yoga has slow moves, that doesn't mean it needs to take up a lot of time. Here to show us speed yoga is instructor Dara Cole. Welcome, Dara. Thank you. So a lot of us don't have enough time to make it to a 45-minute or one-hour yoga class. What are the most essential things we can do? And hopefully you can demonstrate for us what we can do to squeeze in yoga into our day. Sure. Well, the most important thing to do is just to get grounded. Okay. That will affect your entire day. How do I get grounded? So the first <laughs> thing you want to do is most people need a block. Okay. There's very few people that don't need a block to sit on. And if you don't have a block, you can do this on the edge of your bed. Mm -hmm. You can do it on a chair. But you just want to find a nice, comfortable okay. seat. We're able to really keep the spine lifted. Without a block, there tends to be a lot of slouching and crunching. And then just get tall in the spine. So really feel your seat pressed into the floor. Your mm -hmm. tailbone is down. And from there, start to draw your lower belly in. Lift up through the heart and the chest. And just take a second to close your eyes and just begin to notice your breathing. So you're really just checking in with your breath, noticing where you feel the breath in, in your body, making sure that you feel belly, chest, both moving. Mm -hmm. And take a few full breaths in and out through the nose. So it's inhale, at least six counts, exhale. And this is really just three breaths that really set you up for a practice. And after the end of your third breath, you can remove the block and then we're gonna just warm up the spine. So after spending the night sleeping, most of us are really, really tight. Okay. So you wanna make sure that you bring your hands so that they're right underneath your shoulders mm -hmm. and line up your wrists with the edge of your mat. Spread the fingers, knees are underneath your hips and then just tuck your toes, raise your gaze, belly is in and lift your tailbone and your head up. So coming into cow pose and with your exhale, pull your belly in, rounding the spine. Inhale, and this is cat cow. So this is just a right. simple cat cow. Yeah. So it should really- I like to go, like I love doing this just a little, I go meow, moo, meow, moo. Is and that, that, can, okay? that can be really, really helpful. It's I got really... thrown out of a few yoga classes for doing <laughs> that, stuff. That,
That's, okay. a, that's a good <laughs> idea. So just connecting breath and movement. So you just want to take, I don't know, maybe four or five okay. rounds and look for those places where it really does sure. feel good. Uh -huh. Once you're done with that, you can go ahead and just stand up. Okay. We don't have to do a real fancy stand up. There's many ways to stand up, anyway. but we don't have a lot of, you know, <laughs> you we don't have it. a lot I of time. You missed it. I just did a real fancy. Did you do a yeah, fancy one? So. I'm not going to do it again either. Please? There's a little backflip involved. Nope. You okay. missed it. Okay. Um, and, then, and then we're just working on finding Tadasana, which is just a mountain pose and okay. is basically how you stand. And if you take a moment just to, even though it seems simple, just to like set up your set up your Tadasana, st set up your standing pose, mm -hmm. this sets up your posture for the day. Okay. So you want to make sure... You, it actually, it's pretty good. Feet are parallel, mm -hmm. hips a little forward, little tuck with the tailbone, belly in, lift the chest up, chin away from your chest, and then inhale, add raising your arms up. But keep the shoulders, the scapula down, and be energetic with the arms. You can even raise the gaze a little bit. And then with your exhale, you're gonna bend your knees slightly. Most people need to give a little bend in the knees and just round forward, pulling your belly in the whole time. You should not feel this in the lower back. Oh, you've got a pretty nice range there. If you weren't able to bring the hands to the floor, mm -hmm. you could again come knees to the block. block, bring it to either level, and maybe even walk out the knees a little bit. You may hear things crack or pop a little bit here. Uh, there'll be a crackle and pop, <laughs> I guarantee that. And letting so, the head hang. Okay. So this is really throughout your day, usually like if you drop something and you have to bend forward, you want to know how to bend forward in an engaged way, and you can continue to deepen the stretch. And if you're able to bring the hands to the floor, you want to make it deeper, you can always bring the hands underneath the feet. You've got mm -hmm. sneakers on, so that might hurt. But That's fine. And I can handle it. <laughs> wow, tough guy. Relax the head down, belly in, and create a little bit more rounding. When you come up, you're going to come up one vertebra at a time, so really rounding. Imagine like your head is really, really heavy. It's going to be the last thing to come up. And then at the top, take your hands to your lower back. This is actually the most important thing to do every day, which is to create some kind of a backward bend. Okay. Because throughout the so day... You, you suggest above all else is, okay. is, is, is the back bend and the grounding, you said, is very the important. The grounding ground really important, and you have to do some backward bending because as you go throughout your day, you're bending over a desk mm -hmm. maybe, you end up with this over kind of equipment, posture. whatever it is, <laughs> right. and you're like this. So you want to take that time to really open up. And because you're not that warm yet, because we just had a couple of minutes, mm -hmm. I suggest really using the hands there because that's going to keep you from crunching in the lower back. Okay. So you're just bringing your hands to your lower back, lift up through the chest, look up towards the ceiling, and begin to push your hips forward, using your hands to push your hips. Look up, beautiful. So chest up and keep leaning back. Do you feel it there? Mm -hmm. Good, that's a good spot. <laughs> <laughs> and then so you can start to come up. And you could even, if you have the time, to do a few rounds forward and back. Right. That would be helpful. Uh -huh. Next thing you're going to do is some side bending. So again, the arms come up. Okay. And then bring one arm down by your side. Pick one. I did okay. my left. Inhale, stretch up, and then begin to bend towards the left side. And so the alignment is good. Yeah, so in this, in this way... If you drop your keys or something, mm -hmm. we never bend to the floor to the side. I do. So you just, this is how I you do. This yeah, is I how. Like let me this. see. I usually put one arm up like this, and then I, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> I you do are not really, do that. Yeah, really I don't, I, don't have, I don't have that kind of flexibility. <laughs> yeah. So you want to take that in your range. So you're just reaching up. You can gaze up towards your fingertips right. and keep everything parallel. So there's no twisting or turning out of the pose. And take it all the way to the side. Keep moving your hips the opposite way okay. of the right arm. So yeah. this is actually a great move if you want to change a light bulb and pick up your keys at the same time. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Thank you so much for these moves. These were all excellent moves, and you should incorporate them every day. Thank you so much once again. Coming up next, time-saving tips from a wellness coach. We're talking about fitting fitness into our hectic schedules. Here with some great advice on how to free up some space to make time to work out is positive life coach, Melissa Schnapp. Welcome. Thank you, hi Jeff. So we're pressed for time today and you are going to teach us, as your name suggests, how to fit fitness in in a schnapp. Yes, I am, <laughs> okay. that's what I'm awesome. gonna do. Awesome, so how can we find a balance in our lives so that we can include fitness? Because everybody works so much these days. And, and that is such an important question for so many people. So what we first need to do is realize that we have a lot more choice 
in our schedule than we really give ourselves credit for. We have that story of, oh, I have no time, I have, I have no, no time, time. Yeah, exactly. I have no time. But the truth is, what I tell clients to do is to look at their calendar. Mm -hmm. But not the whole calendar, not the whole month, just a day. So you look at the day and you say, okay, what are the non-negotiables, you know? So I've got to work, I've got to drive the kids, the mm -hmm. things that really you can't change. Right. Okay, so you look at that first. And then you say, the rest of the time is, guess what? Yours. <laughs> it's yours. You can do whatever you so, want you with it. You know what my I look at my I look at my schedule, and my schedule has tons of overlapping, you know, uh, so there, there really isn't any free time. So what I do is I actually work out while, I, while I'm, like, on calls, and, you know, it, uh, it works for me. Absolutely. Yeah. So whatever really works for you. I mean, so that's the thing. So we really need to either get the story out of our mind and look when there is free time mm -hmm. or fit it in kind of when you can. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'll have a lot of people say, well, you know what? Um, I really can't get to the gym. I can't do this. But what I do, and I even tell, share this with people, is I will make a great playlist. I go in front of the mirror and I dance. Yeah. And I just dance for 20 minutes or 30 minutes, whatever I may have, or even if it's 15, it's better than nothing. Because people will often say, you know, well, if I can't do it all, then I'm just not gonna do it. Right. But that's really, you know, not so. You can do just even a little just, bit. The whole idea is to squeeze it in. And might I suggest you need to add to your playlist Billy Idol's Dancing By Myself because that's a perfect song well, for Well, that's playlist. a perfect song, <laughs> and I will definitely do that. So now, how, do people, how do people become more proficient with their time when they're busy? What are some strategies they can actually employ? So to really do that, first of all, again, prioritize. So I say prioritize, mm -hmm. plan, and be present. So that's really a nice mixture of everything sure. if you think about it. So prioritize, like, so you have all this list of things. What has to be done? Mm -hmm. Again, what's first? Prioritize, plan, put it in the calendar. Don't just keep thinking about it, you know. Put it in the calendar, ink it in, right? right? And then be present. So when you're doing it, do just that. Mm -hmm. Don't be thinking about the past or worrying about the future. Be right in what you're doing, whatever sure. it is. Because first of all, it's the quality, not the quantity. I right. couldn't agree more. Right. Absolutely. And and you touched on something really important, which is, and this is something that 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 I, I very strongly believe in, and that is that anxiety exists in the future, depression exists in the past, and peace is in the present. And if you live that, you will always be a that, happy and productive person. That's exactly right. So just also breathing. Remember sure. to breathe when you're whatever you're doing, it just brings you right back. To that, moment, mm -hmm. to that moment. Now, now people also seem to get stuck on, you know, sort of doing it right. They're perfectionists, right. triple type right. A, especially in, you know, in, in major cities. People are have that gung ho attitude. Yes, yes. But talk to me about perfection. Is perfection really even necessary? So the truth is, perfection paralyzes us. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, if I'm not doing it right, I'm not doing it exactly the way it's supposed to be, then it's not good enough. We really need to be kind to ourselves and take care of ourselves in the process and, you know, put a little bit in, do a little bit, congratulate ourselves that we've done it, do a little bit more. When you start doing it, as you know, with exercise, right. it becomes a habit and then you want more, right. you crave it. So it's really just getting over that hump in the beginning, you know, the initial of like you're not used to it and mm -hmm. kind of getting it in and then it becomes more of something that you really want to have and you get it in your life. Sure. And, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting too, especially as it relates excuse me, to, to, to exercise, is I have personally many members of my gym and clients that I see personally who are captains of industry. These are like the world's busiest people. Right. Busy beyond, right. you know, your wildest imagination. They're constantly traveling. They have crazy hours. They work 16, 18 hour days. I mean, literally, they still find a way because they make the time for themselves. What are your top three strategies, I guess, for anybody to fit exercise into their day? So the top three strategies kind of go back to the prioritize. You know, mm -hmm. like if that's a priority, if exercise is a priority, so that's up there. Okay, so what kind of exercise? Mm -hmm. How, you know, what do you like to do? Some people don't like the gym. They could walk up and down the steps, take the steps, right. you know, um, park your car farther away. I mean, we've all heard these before, mm -hmm. but really to get it somewhere in your day, because if you don't, you will have to do it some other way. You know, dis-ease, you know, like just kind of like not Absolutely. taking care of yourself is going to force you to fit in whether you're in the hospital or you're in a bed or something. You Life has a way it. of making the time for you Ex if you don't make time for yourself. Exactly. We unfortunately are pressed for time right now and we're out of time, but thank you so much for all thank of those strategies. They were excellent. Stay tuned because coming up next, my personal techniques when my life, yeah, my life gets too busy. Today we've been 
covering strategies for the time press. And let's face it, who isn't time pressed? I'm time pressed. You're time pressed. We're all time pressed. And I have three. Three D's to help you manage your time. The first D stands for decide. Look at your schedule and decide what's actually important and also realize at the same time there's a difference between important and urgent. Urgent needs to be dealt with immediately. Important may not need to be. The second one stands for delegate. I know, you've heard it before. Delegate responsibility, but are you actually doing it? You probably have a spouse or partner or even kids that want to get in on the action and help you out. Even if they don't, delegate anyway. It's going to help free up some time for you. The third one is double up, and that's my personal favorite. All that means is look for activities that you can pair with each other. So if you're going to have a meeting and you have the opportunity to go for a walk with the person that you're meeting with, you can sneak in a little exercise or even just getting outside and taking a little bit of a mental break while you have that meeting. Try the three Ds and I think it just might free up some time for exercise. I'm Jeff Halvey and I'll see you next time on Workout From Within.